We're, gonna, we're setting up some samples, and I'm uh, telling you that I've got uh, a lot of excitement flowing in the hallways here. These young men have a lot of fans. Uh, how long? Now you mentioned your new album. How long does it take to make an album, Dennis? About uh, uh, this new one uh, called Blow Up uh, took us was it three months? Jim? Four months. Four months. Wow. Yeah, the first one only took ten days, <laughs> especially for you. The second one, Green Thoughts, took sixteen days, and the uh, third one called Smithereens Eleven took uh, two months so this 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 one took us the longest to make so the more the more a group becomes famous the longer it takes to make albums for somehow now it's amazing you take bruce springsteen and 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 michael jackson when they were here in the old days they used to knock out albums every two three months now they not they put out an album now every five years so what, how did, how well, did the... you know you get a little more notoriety and you get a little more money to spend in the studio uh, of course it's it. our own money that we're spending so uh... And we took weekends off this time. That's what made it. How many days per year do you concertize? Mm, 11 months, John? 11 yeah. months out of the year. It's about 300 days out of a year you're concertizing. Yeah. Between 200, 300 days, yeah. And what do you do? How do you relax? What's the leisure activity when you're not... Uh, well, we go to our hotel room. I hope you're syndicated in that city and watch it. Guaranteed. You catch us <laughs> different parts of the country? Yeah, yeah, actually, Dennis and I take walks all the time. You know, wherever we go, we just soak in local color. We're very exciting people, as you can tell. You are exciting people, and you excite audiences. Now, what audiences in what part of the country, which arenas, which cities, which anything, excite you the most? Let's do oh. it in reverse. Oh, there's so many, Jim. Starting yeah. with Jim. Gee, all the major cities, Chicago, Boston, New York, L.A., they're all good towns for us, and even parts of Canada. Atlanta. That's a great yeah. And Europe. Europe's incredible. Which part of Europe do they mostly reflect and radiate that energy back to the stage, the energy that you're sending out? Where, where in Europe do they mostly send it back to you? What would you say? Spain? Spain, is Spain really? Electrifying, Spain. yeah. yeah. Uh, we did pretty good in France last time. England and uh, Scandinavia. Iceland. Iceland. We went to Iceland, and it's a place you wouldn't normally go on For a vacation. <laughs> and it wasn't that cold, but it was great to be there because not too many bands go there. So they were excited to have us, and they treated us like the Beatles. You know, we got off the plane, we did the press conference and everything. So We have the number one album there, as a matter of fact. Listen, you have the number one album in many places. The people from Capitol <laughs> Records tell me that they cannot print CDs and cassettes. I don't think they make albums anymore, right? We actually, you know, I should have brought one, but uh, we demanded that while it's still being made, we wanted our, our newest album to be pressed onto vinyl, and it's probably our last time that we will, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very limited. I the, printed maybe a thousand of them or something. Just so That's we so. could have them, probably. Yeah, yeah. We'll get one for you, Joe. You promise? Sure. So you only have 999 left That's in, right. in the closet, right? Who's counting? Who's counting? I'm chatting here with Jim and with Dennis of the Smithereens. Stephen Fife is a journalist who has written many fine articles, some of them about us in, in the New York Times and Village Voice and so forth. And I asked him to sit with me and chat with me. What do you want to ask or say of the, and any comment, uh, Stephen, about the uh, Smithereens? Well, I'm interested in the, uh, the kind of MTV influence and um, you know what you think about uh, making videos and uh, if that's something uh, that you enjoy doing how, how does it uh, you know relate to your music do you good question Jim I'll let you answer that thanks <laughs> well we definitely enjoy making them and since we're not actors and uh, personally I don't like those kind of videos anyway I like performance videos so we we tend to go with uh, with that doing performance pieces it's it's a necessity these days you know if you want to sell records to as many people as possible you have to have a video out there not you... just to hear the music but to see it with, yeah. with, with scantily clad young ladies we don't have too much we, yeah we don't, videos, we don't but do. we do try to have a lot of fun fun with, with our videos. richard ornstein now, now first of all these gentlemen are nostalgiacs you want to tell the world why you what, what makes you feel uh, a young man like you feel that nostalgic that sentimental dennis oh we like a lot of the old stuff like abbott and costello more more of the tv shows than the movies actually with sid fields and stinky and bingo the chimp uh, how about mr ed yeah, mr ed's okay <laughs> mr ed's okay uh uh, I like the Dick Van Dyke show a lot, and uh, Leave It to Beaver. How about the Joe Franklin show? <laughs> Joe Franklin show is up there. Let me tell you. <laughs> Richie, a little bit of trivia. They want to get a, sure. Richard Ornstein is our trivial pursuit uh, authority, and he's going to try and stump the panel. Which band leader conducted the Gramercy Five? Oh. I know. That's a tough one. <laughs> I know. Artie Shaw. That's right. Oh, I love Artie Shaw. <laughs> you know, he's all of these. Okay, how did, could you tell me how they got their name, Joe? The grammar, from the phone number, Gramercy Five? Gramercy? No, no. no? That's what Gramercy I was saying. Park Hotel. Mm. And that's where they used to meet, and Artie Shaw used to no, live there. I apologize. Has Artie been on the show? Oh, yeah. Not, not in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. but he was here many times. Here's a rock and roll one for the guys. Come Go With Me was a big hit for the Dell Vikings in 1957, but who had the hit record of Come Softly to Me in 1959? Fleetwoods. There you yeah. go. Very wow. good. Wow. Seattle. 
All right. What was Paul Anka's first big hit in 1950? Diana. <laughs> you guys are high. <laughs> ABC Paramount. How many, how, many, how many revolutions Whoa. from it? <laughs> he knows 78 and 45. He knows literature. What famous recording artist took a non-singing role in the 1916 film, Elma Gantry, which starred Burt Lancaster and Gene Simmons? That's Wait, a toughie. Say it one more time. Is it? A non-singing role. A, a non sing I know, a yeah. non-singing role. She was known as that singing rage. Patty Page. Patty there Page. You go. Good clue there. <laughs> Good Dennis, clue. you know your stuff. You're on target. Glenn Miller composed the music for Moonlight Serenade, but who wrote the lyrics? Hmm, that I don't know. He was here about two weeks ago. Mitchell Parrish. That's mm. correct. He wrote Stardust. Oh, yeah. oh. He's still around, huh? This yeah, 96 years old, younger than we are. Wow. Peppy. That's great. In the 1954 movie, River of No Return, Marilyn Monroe sang Bye Bye Blackbird, but who sang the song? In the movie, The Eddie Cantor Story. Brian Garrett. No. <laughs> You're getting close. <laughs> Eddie Cantor himself. That's it, Joe. You got it. All right, one more. They made their radio debut in 1926 with the characters Sam and Henry. They later changed their name to what characters? That's oh, a tough one. Uh, uh, it wouldn't be... Um, Simon and Garfunkel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good guess, Jim. Well, uh, Amos and Andy. I was going to say Amos, Amos, Amos and Andy. is correct. Amos and Andy. Stephen, how about an article one day in one of your newspapers on old-time radio? There's a big oh, uh, yeah. phenomenal... Right, interest in, in old-time radio lately. Every place I go, I hear about mm -hmm. it. And the man who did the Civil War special is doing a special now on old-time radio. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's going to be a big thing. Oh, Great oh, Woody Allen movie, Radio Days. Right, Radio Days. The right, Woody that right. really captures that feeling, too. And these are the MTV kind of uh, video days. I'm going to show you one of the new ones now by the Smithereens. And I'll say it again, they are of the moment. They're nice and shy and modest. <laughs> and their newest video goes exactly, or one of the newest ones goes exactly like this. Enjoy it. Of, uh, the truly outstanding bands of recent and modern times, the Smithereens. Where was that shot, Dennis? Uh, that was shot in Atlantic City, different parts of the city. But the uh, the last scene you saw um, was up at the uh, what was the name of the Trump street? Castle? Trump I Castle, think. the no. Regency Suite, or something. Trump, like Tower. Trump Tower. No, it was Castle. the High Roller Suite. That's right. Yeah. What about the people who, who let's say, when they were 18 years old, Dennis, and they would like that kind of music, and now, now they're 45 and 50. Are they still fans of that kind of music? Yeah, you know, we, our audiences span a pretty wide uh, age group. Yeah, our fan letters range from age 12 to, I don't know, 50. Yeah, we get it's incredible. It's pretty nice. Now, that's uh, modern-day television. What else? Let me ask my whole panel here before I get sidetracked. What would you like to see more of in modern-day 1991 television, starting with Jim? What would you like to have more of? Uh, hmm, I don't know. Uh, just better plots, I better guess. Better plots. <laughs> not, not every, everything but... seems like it's uh, it's rehashed, you know? Uh, like better writing, right? You know? Yeah. You ever see late Red Fox on this program? No, he was on the show. About four times. I've got to try and find some of those old uh, yeah. kinescopes or videos. He was a great man. He it's was... really sad. His new show was so entertaining. And... Uh, he was such a marvelous man. Yeah. I see they're bringing the Ernie Kovac show back on uh, some station. Nat King Cole, everything old. What would you like to see, old or new, more of on TV, oh, Dennis? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm... There's so much stuff, you know. How about reruns of your old stuff? I'll dig them out. I'll <laughs> dig them out of the archive. Do you have everything? Do you have kinescopes? No, or... I only kept out of my several thousand shows... Maybe about 12. 12? 12. That's all. Bing Crosby, uh, I guess Bob Hope, Joe Lewis, and uh, Andy Devine. Uh, nothing on Smiling Ed, huh? Shirley Temple. <laughs> Smiling Ed. Uh, McConnell. McConnell. No, remember him? Yeah. He was great. Uh, he I was... remember because he was before Andy Devine on the, the gang, the, right. the show with the kids. Jingles, whatever it was. Well, what was the name of that show? Uh, um... I don't know. Sponsored by a shoe company. By uh, Buster Brown. Buster Brown, right. Yeah. Stephen Fife, since you're a uh, TV critic, a man of the tube, what would you like more of? I, I like, uh, I go for something that takes a risk. Um, I really like the early uh, season of, uh, of Twin Peaks. I really liked. Uh, mm. I went for something that um, is unpredictable and keeps you guessing. I think, you know, television is such a high-risk venture economically. People tend to you know, get very afraid of, uh, you know, of doing anything that's going to be a little out there. Um, or else they just go for something Kinky. sensationalistic <laughs> that, you know, fades very quickly. Right. So, um, you know, I, I'm a character and story person myself. You give me somebody, you know, who I want to keep watching and, um, you know, a series of events that I can't predict five episodes in advance and, 
you know. This man is a keen TV critic, also a fan of Ellen Stewart of La Mama. He wants us to meet uh, Ellen Stewart of La Mama on tomorrow's program, so mm. that should be a blockbuster. Rich Jornstein, if you had your uh, uh, power to uh, get more of something on TV. Besides a lot more Joe Franklin. Stop there, stop there. That's it. We shall, yeah, what else? <laughs> Abbott and Costello, Martin and Lewis, right. you know, the original ones and the... Uh, uh, Elvis movies, the early ones. Got a couple of friends who want to meet the smithereens. Follow these words, my friends. Let's watch closely. Stay here. Be right back. Tommy Ritacco on my show doing his Russ Colombo routine. And Dennis wanted to tell him how much he enjoys the memory of Russ wow. Colombo. But you had a question, I believe, for... Uh, what, what was the exact circumstances of his death? Uh, was it Russ a gun Col accident? Or? Russ Colombo's untimely death at the age yeah. of 26. That, you know? they, they don't know whether it was really an accident or intentional. Mm. You know? He was an antique gun collector, and this photographer came over to show him some guns, and somehow or other his gun went off. Uh -huh. By the way, can I ask a question about the Smithereens? Sure. Please. What is the average instrumentation of a, a good rock and roll group? Uh, well, rock and roll really started out with, you know, in the old days, was drums, piano, sax, rhythm guitar, and a bass. And then it kind of moved on to two guitars, a lead in rhythm, bass, and drums augmented maybe by those other instruments too so that's what i would say this young man tommy besides being a uh, top musician is also a compiler uh, of anthologies he's done anthologies on capital for who for the well, i uh, did a couple things uh four freshmen that came out earlier this year and stan kenton coming out i read yeah how and about a, how about a louis prima also. Louis prima. how about a compilation one day of uh, russ colombo songs sure i'm not that much uh, as well versed on that but he'll coach you all right, right. he will learn you he'll learn you <laughs> Now, Billy Pop just wanted to have the pleasure of giving you his new LP. Billy, what do you want to say? What's the connection with, between you and... Well, we used to play all the same clubs, you know. Yeah. Of course, I'm still playing them, and uh, they're still playing, playing the bigger... Well, Billy well, Pop. Last year's right, it's going to be at the Kenny's, right? Yeah. Of Pop. Why don't you name some of your... Uh, oh, may I? Please. Yeah. Well, uh, tonight, we're going to be at University of Rhode Island in Kingston, Rhode Island. 19th, Plymouth State College, Plymouth, New Hampshire. The Sting in New Britain, Connecticut on the 20th. Toad's Place in New Haven, Connecticut on the 22nd. The of boat. October. Of November, oh, right. November. Nope. No, October, October. October, 1991, right. Then going down to Norfolk, Virginia, the Boathouse on the 23rd to 24th. James Madison University, Harrisburg, Virginia. Towson State, Towson, Maryland on the 25th. And the 26th, University of Delaware. Oh, you guys are Newark, busy. Delaware. Who guy can't get a I'm job? Gonna, I'm going to be at the... <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, Billy Pop and Pop this where? We're gonna, um, <laughs> we're gonna be at the uh, Lone Star Vote House on the 19th, Saturday of October 19th, around midnight. But don't ever take off that hat, please, right? No, no, well, my hair will fall out. Come on, show that curly hair. Show, yeah, show that too. curly hair. How's that? Show Beautiful. We Isn't that pretty nice, right, Joe? <laughs> he parts his hair in the middle, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's only about a foot High wide. <laughs> <laughs> we shall return following these words. Let's watch closely. Stay here. <laughs> Nash told me I must ask you about that uh, album cover, that CD cover. Oh, yeah. 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 It's a wonderful man named Saul Bass designed it for us. Uh, Saul Bass did movie posters for uh, Vertigo, a lot of Hitchcock stuff. He's world famous. Psycho, uh, North by Northwest. Saul Bass is the best. Anatomy of a Murder. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> and also, to my surprise, he did uh, corporate logos. He did United Airlines logo, Bell Telephone, Quaker Oats. That's Incredible. the second album cover he ever did, especially for an album cover. The first was Trilogy by Sinatra. And this is the Smithereens 10, as distinguished from? Uh, that's our video compilation. Uh, it was called 10 because there's 10 videos on there, but the CD was Smithereens 11. Named after Ocean's Eleven. Well, oh, you're a very, very uh, well organized and uh, clever group, and they're great, and you can see why they're hot. Meanwhile, have a great everything until we meet again. My final word would be help me with the final word. Uh, Ciao, baby. Ciao, baby. <laughs> Happy rock.